two days of Cleveland Browns OTAs in the book. We got thoughts. We're going to share them all here. Pete Smith joins your latest Locked On Browns is live now. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on the LOB, the Locked On Browns podcast, brought to the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Your host, Jeff Lowe, and I appreciate all of you who make Locked On Browns your first listen every single day. Every day, crowd keeps growing and growing. Join in, subscribe to the Locked On Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Uh, as I said, look, we're going to get into it. Uh, two days, OTAs. Um, Pete Smith from the OBR is here. Pete was in the house yesterday. I was able to obviously catch everything you know, from a uh, pretty close glimpse Pete, you know, you're starting to see some glimpses, you know, a little bit of the transformation here of what this is going to be. One thing, and look, the, the, what's limited in far as what's being leaked, a lot of motion, a lot of motion with uh, you know, within the offense here. Um, and look, you know, this defense, we're going to get to the defense. The defense is going to be fantastic. We know the defense is going to be really, really good. And we're all looking forward to, you know, just the jump they take from year one to year two, of course, with Jim Schwartz. The offense is supposed to succeed. If also, the offense doesn't look good in a scenario like this, it's not good, so to speak. Um, but yesterday, Deshaun, spectator, well, mental reps, I should apologize. A lot of James, a lot of Huntley, obviously. Pete, some thoughts from you know what you saw uh, in day two of OTAs this week. Well, I mean, look, it's unpadded. Uh, offense has a massive advantage, uh, and it looked it. Um, offensively, I mean, look, it, you're going to see them – widen out a little bit more uh certainly something they're not unaccustomed to but especially because david Dijoku's is not there um not participating like what are they going to do they're not going to get in double and triple tights to uh to, to do some of this stuff so they're going to get a bunch of receivers on the field uh spread them out and let them do stuff with some running backs and and everything else and it's interesting you certainly see some elements that hint at some of the things that dorsey did there's uh more freedom for receivers to sort of read and, and see where they want to go. In addition to some stuff that is, that is, you know, just entrenched in the play and, you know, it, in so much that it's organized and you're calling plays and everything else, it's sort of like sort of a street ball type mentality in some ways, like, uh, you know, a quarterback just runs around uncontested can hold onto the ball a really long time to, and throw because they want to see that element. They don't, you know, it, it, it doesn't, serve a purpose for them to blow the whistle and go sack. They want to see guys play the ball. They want to see guys catch the ball. So it's interesting. I, the, the, you know, in, in only the one day I, I see Jamari thrash get open, like as advertised in terms of guy who gets open guy who get, can make plays. They line them up a lot of different places. Evidently, you know, which is common. The NFL has gotten very good at being able to just, have guys go in there and have the play call, tell them exactly what to do. So they know where to line up and, and it's a quick transition. So those things stand out. Cedric Tillman to me is a guy that people should not discount. Uh, he's just big. He's very big. He's very strong and athletic. He looks like an ex receiver and you can, you know, you hope that n now a full year in a, in, in, the, in an NFL system, will be 18 months will be very important for him to educate himself on how NFL offenses work and just reading leverages and being able to make those adjustments because Tennessee is legitimately one of the most rudimentary offenses you can find in college football. And that's not a bad thing because they're really good at it. It just doesn't really translate to the level of competition you're going to see uh, in the NFL. Uh, uh, Cedric Kelly was really good at getting open against co competition he faced at collegiate level, but he wasn't asked to sort of read the safety and make an adjustment based on that to either, you know, re run a post or run, run, run a dig route based on that leverage, uh, which got him last year. So that evolution is going to be interesting. They've got just a lot of guys. I, the, t the talent on this team is apparent. 
Um, there's just a lot of guys that I think are going to be interesting to see what they, they compete. But like, it's so hard to really come out of this and go, man, you really got to watch out for so-and-so because there's no pads. There's no anything else along those lines. It's just sort of interesting to see the guys are competing and getting out there and starting to uh, get back into football. Well, and the other thing is if you were to make a physical play or some nature or whatever and somebody goes down, you know, as much as you think you made a great play, they may run you out of the building. Um, every time I hear Dorsey, I, 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 I still get like a twitch and some hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Look, Ken Dorsey, I apologize. That has nothing to do with you. I think we all know where that's coming from. But in this element, you, you, you know, you talk about and, and you want to see the new toys. You know, that's, you know, kind of what you're hoping for. And with Jerry Judy, you know, with Thresh, they're – you know, th there was a lot, and obviously both guys were worked to with Elijah, Mari Cooper, certainly uh, neither one involved. David and Joku not involved either. Um, but, you know, for – and it's important. Look, you get in, you know, it, it's a new environment. You want to, you know, get these first couple of days A out of the way, but you also want to kind of hit the ground running, so to speak. You know, for Judy, obviously featured at basically, you know, the pseudo number one probably yesterday. Uh, Jamari Thresh, you know, trying to get, hey, you know, yeah, I am a rookie, but, you know, hey, I think I'm ready to go and I'm ready to contribute right away. Those types of things are important. It, a, it's important for the guys around them, viewing them and seeing them now as teammates. But it's also important for, you know, Judy and Thresh themselves. Obviously, a brand new beginning for Jerry Judy. Jamari Thresh, it's the, hey, you know, I'm here now and, you know, I want to stick within this league. So it's important from every aspect, you know, that these guys essentially go out there and, you know, find a way to, you know, put together some positives right away. Sure. And Jerry Judy looks good. I mean, he looks, he should. He's, White face mask, the visors, it's all popping. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Amari Cooper's not there. And Jerry Judy at that point becomes the de facto number one. They are moving him all over the place, which is good. Obviously, they, you know, if they're going to go into an offense which features more spread looks, getting Jerry Judy in as many, you know, advantageous positions as possible is certainly going to be helpful. And his, his burst is just, it's impressive. He, his, his speed over, he's obviously got the ability to be a burner, but it's just his acceleration. What really stands out. He's able to create separation quickly. So if a guy makes a false step, he can blow right by them. And if there's no help there, he's got an opportunity to make a big time play. And you sort of, you saw a clip of that yesterday or coming out of yesterday that showed, showed that when Jameis Winston sort of hit him on the, on the uh, left sideline. So, yeah, I mean, look, you are trying to get the offense down. You're trying to get comfortable just trying to feel out, get past the thinking stage and get into the competing stage of the playbook where you're not thinking about what you have to do. You know, you're thinking about how you beat the guy across from you and how you're going to best put yourself uh, in a position to succeed. So they've got so many guys, which is good. A lot of competition. They've, you know, they've got guys competing and the Browns have particularly a lot of wide receivers. So like Michael Woods had a couple of nice moments and the guy people sort of forgotten about because he tore the Achilles last year uh, and was just, had disappeared by virtue of that. Um, they've got just a lot of people trying to compete for spots. They brought in that Landers kid, uh, the undrafted free agent out of Arkansas, who's bounced around a couple of different places. And he's enormous. He's a giant guy with elite physical traits. And I love that. Whether or not he works, I, I look at it like I look at Anthony Schwartz. You don't love that you spent a third round pick on Anthony Schwartz, but this is the type of thing. I, like I love, I love Anthony Schwartz from the Dolphins standpoint. You didn't pay anything, and if he works out, you get like a nice stretch of play or one season out of him. It's a huge win because he has that world class speed. Same thing with Landers. If he plays to the four three seven, he ran at six four, it's two hundred pounds, uh, and can do sort of some of the things maybe Rashad Perriman did back in the day. Uh, for the Browns, and, and you could be like thrilled. It's a huge find, and if he's gone in a week, it, you, they gave up nothing but a roster spot. So I like those type of shots. Get the, these physical freaks that are, you're trying to get prove themselves. I also like the, the bringing in a guy like Landers because corners have to match up against him, and they've got to get accustomed to that because they're going to have to face off against Jamar Chase and T Higgins and George Pickens, and uh, the Ravens just drafted Devontae Walker, who's going to try to stretch the field and. Whether Landers can can find a way to the practice squad or even the active roster, he's benefiting those other guys by competing because he's got he's got to be good to make uh, make a name for himself, whether it's in Cleveland or somewhere else. So he's going to give the best he has, and those guys are going to get better by by virtue of that. 
Well, Chargers this year, Quinton Johnson, another player that kind of fits that bill, and you give you guys your work against you know something that might be different than your own team has to offer. We're going to continue to roll on here. We're going to talk a little bit certainly about the defensive side of the ball. Uh, recapping this week's OTAs, the OBR speed Smith in the house. Nobody go anywhere. Uh, this episode brought, uh, brought to you by one of our fine sponsors, Yahoo Finance. Wouldn't it be great if you could see all of your investment and retirement accounts in one place? With Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. Look, you know, I got two girls. There's college funds, retirement funds. You need to understand exactly what's happening with what you have. And Yahoo Finance helps you with that. When it comes to your financial future, you think you've done it all. You saved, you researched, you've invested all that you can. Now you need to take those investments to the next level by using what every financial great uses, Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investment investor securely link your brokerage accounts for an unfiled view of your wealth including 401k and other investments a comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors and it's how yahoo finance ensures you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety and totality for a comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. Again, yahoofinance.com. Your latest Locked On Browns continues. We are joined by the OBRs, Pete Smith. I appreciate everybody who makes Locked On Browns their first listen every single day. The everyday crowd keeps getting bigger and bigger. Don't miss out. Subscribe to Locked On Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. Now, Pete, look, you see the secondary out there, and you know it's they're starting to get, I think, the national props they deserve. Um, you know, uh, Martin Emerson, uh, recently through a poll was, you know, a top 10 cornerback in man coverage and a top 10 cornerback in zone coverage. You talk about what Greg Newsom can do in the slot, what Greg Newsom was able to do on the outside last year when he was asked to play there due to injury. We all know the player Denzel Ward is there's depth everywhere. Bookie Watson made, uh, you know, a big interception in team drill yesterday, but great. Again, new guys coming in, trying to find that first moment, you know, where you can believe in yourself and your other team, you can you, your new teammates can believe in you as well. You know, the depth on the defensive line, the defensive tackle room. And, man, Pete, we went back to when that room used to be stinking tumbleweeds. And now all of a sudden you look at that defensive tackle room and whether it is, whether it's not, you look at that guy, Siaki Ika was a top 100 pick just a year ago. And he could be a guy in a really, really difficult spot. The room has just gotten so deep, so talented. Yes, there is some age there. There is some youth there. Um, but there's going to be a lot of work to be done. But overall, you see this defense and the way it's trending. And, you know, last year it may have come a little quick, quicker than maybe people expected it to. And then there were times where it kind of, you know, laid down and it wasn't you know, what its capabilities were. And a lot of that had to do to injury and certainly Miles Garrett being out there, but not being 100% Miles Garrett. But this is a an absolute unit to be reckoned with. Yeah, I think the defense overall should be better this year, a full year in the system. I think they've added talent. I think Jordan Hicks is going to be an upgrade. Getting getting Mike Hall in defensive tackle rotation, adding Quentin Jefferson, like even if Hall only plays like 25% of the snaps as a pass rusher and he's effective, that's going to give them another interior presence. Quentin Jefferson, they view as a, an upgrade. The, the comfort of – being able to just know what you're going to do and just incorporate some new pieces and then being able to evolve and expand to address the issues that they struggled with last year. So much of what the Browns were doing seemed to be Jim Schwartz setting tone. We're going to be really good at these things. And then now we're going to go back in and add to it and figure out how to adjust and get better. So that part of it's really interesting. Obviously the defensive tackle room and or defensive line in general has a lot of guys. It's going to be competitive to the point where, Guys who are going to end up, guys who are going to be let go or traded, are you know they they are NFL caliber players. They're going to end up on other rosters. The Browns have more than the number of guys they're going to carry, assuming everybody stays healthy. They aren't going to be keep everybody. Uh, and then corner is super competitive. Um, they have the guys returning the top four plus. They've got Khalif Halasi from last year, who they carried on the roster the entire year. Who's intriguing because of his length and ability. And then they drafted 
uh, Miles Harden, and then they brought in a rival from the Ma- the Missouri Valley Conference and Deshaun Gales. So they've just got endless amounts of body. Vincent Gray is still here, who has his shining moment of sort of giving uh, Jamar Chase the business last year in that exhibition game. Um, so there's just a lot of guys and a lot of people competing. And the Browns are thoroughly of the belief that iron's going to sharpen iron in this case. Justin Hardy is there, even though obviously you look at him primarily as please let him never see the defensive backfield in the game. <laughs> you want him to just be what he's special at, which is special teams. Uh, but they have enough guys that they should be able to find that. Find not only a guy who can guys who can function in the slot, but maybe some more guys who can function on the outside, whether it's Cam uh Cam uh Mitchell, Mitchell potentially going, you know, going back outside in addition to being the slot and sort of cross training at both. Well, going the Greg uh, Newsom route. Yeah. Greg Newsom potentially being able to do both spots. They've just got a lot of options to, to work with. And, and that's the, that's the one position. Everybody's there. They are all in the house trying to get work and trying to compete. I, I don't doubt that starts with Denzel setting the tone for those guys. Sure with the expectation and and the feeling that if I'm not there, you know, I, 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 I'm at a disadvantage in such a competitive group. Well, look, man, you can't celebrate if you're not there. So in this group, obviously loves to get out there, loves to celebrate, loves to, you know, basically you know pound their chest about their accomplishments. And, you know, it, 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 this is one where it, it, it it's going to be lost for a while because you're not really going to truly get to see the totality and the development of this defense. You know, who knows how much they play in the summer. And then it's, you know, will it be week one versus the Cowboys? It's going to be a special, special group. And I, I will continue to say, you know, I'm blue in the face. I think that is one of the things that I think everybody, when they talk about this team, is sleeping on. And it's going to be the second year maturation from these players who developed so well as a group last year with a mind like Jim Schwartz. Cleveland Browns defense is going to be special, special in 2024. And to say to be the best defense in the NFL – it, 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 there's definitely some lip service to that. We'll continue on here. Your latest lockdown rounds. Nobody go anywhere. The weather is breaking. It is Memorial Day weekend, which means it is time to do all the fun events you want to do this summer. Is it concerts? Is it theater? Is it ball games? You and guys in Cleveland, is anybody trying to sneak in the SummerSlam? Killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guaranteed. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying NFL tickets. Look, the schedule is out. Do you want to sneak in a week one for the versus the Cowboys? Are you looking to get into a game versus the Steelers, the Ravens, or the Bengals? Game time has you covered. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Closing out your latest Lockdown Browns, I'm your host, Jeff Lloyd. We are joined by the OBRs, Pete Smith. I appreciate you all for making the show your first listen every single day. The everyday crowd, if you're not part of it by now, make a new plan, Stan. And the new plan would be to subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcast. Pete, um, you know, now Deshaun threw on Tuesday, no media. Didn't throw on Wednesday when the media was there. First off, when you're rehabbing, you're not going to throw every day so that does make some sense but there's a there was a reason and you know there was a reason he threw on tuesday and not wednesday we'll see if this continues because i don't think they're going to run and they're looking to hide i don't think deshaun watson is you know looking to run looking to hide but there was a reason they wanted to see where deshaun was at and they certainly didn't want any maybe you know you know media influencers there to you know take a simple negative and try to turn it into something much more than it was yeah look i i think it's smart on the browns part to not put watson out there until he's like ready because if he 
It, it works two ways. If he goes out there and has a great throwing session and you see him throw like a 35-yard rope to Jerry Judy, everybody's like, oh, he's healthy. We're ready to go. Um, and then when he doesn't throw like another day or maybe he takes a couple days off with the spring program, everybody's going, oh, something must be wrong with his shoulder um, or, or he had a setback or whatever. And then the opposite, let's say he goes out there and he doesn't throw well or he just like – just out of reflex rubs his shoulder or is like stretching it a little bit. And then the, the, if that's on video or something, then it's, well, is something wrong with the shoulder? What's wrong? Like where are we at? And I think it just helps to avoid that. And from Watson's standpoint, I, I don't think it's necessarily like they're worried that he's going to, or that he's worried about it, but I do think it does eliminate the potential for him to sort of see a crowd or see cameras and, as can happen with any athlete, a little extra adrenaline. You push yourself a little bit further, trying to make people understand that you're back or, or, or you're stronger or you throw longer than you otherwise should. And it's just not worth it. And none of this is going to change the fact if, if the Browns don't have him throwing on air or throwing to light seven on seven or whatever, it's not going to matter because the, the, the bottom line question for most people is, what are you going to do when the Cowboys come to town? And so, so long as he's ready for that, and my, my benchmark for him is being ready by training camp, which I think he's going to hit. Maybe mini camp, but training camp's the one he needs to be ready for because I want him I, – I would want for him at that point to not be thinking at all about what's my shoulder doing. It's entirely thinking about what's the defense doing. I want – you know, how do I get to my best at that? But if – he it, it, you know he throws great all on air or against seven on seven all summer long and you get all the clips of it. Nobody's going to care if he goes out there and throws two picks and throws you know loses against the Cowboys. Everybody just wants him to prove it, beating the Cowboys for one and staying healthy for two. All the rest of the stuff is sort of unimportant. Even if granted, I'm with you. Like I want to see it. I I, I want to see what he's doing. I'm certainly curious about what it looks like. How how he's throwing. But, you know, at the same time, I want to see it, but I don't want anyone else to see it for all the reasons I just laid out. So <laughs> it's not a big deal to me. I think it's smart for them to sort of like just play it out, trust the program. They've got him. It seems to be working. He seems to be really confident where, where he's at. His teammates seem really confident where he's at. Let's you just roll with it. And it's exactly what it should be. I mean, you know, you're talking about this and, and there's so much for him to, you know, get back into the flow here now and, you know, there's the negativity, you know, for the we reasons that are warranted, the injuries, the negativity there is not warranted by any means whatsoever, but it is still there. And, you know, it, it, it does need to go. Um, Pete, you know, obviously for you, certainly for Brown's faithful, Brown's top pick, Michael Jr. And this is not a spot where, you know, as an interior defensive lineman, you're going to shine. A lot of this, you know, in OTAs, you know, for it, it, it's it's hand in the dirt, it's technique, it's being preached. But all this is being done by a new defensive, you know, a, a defensive line coach for the Cleveland Browns. Thoughts here certainly on Mike Hall, but obviously, cert, uh, thoughts here certainly on Mr. Sazier. Sorry, say that again. I said with, you know, obviously the focus on Mike, top pick, not much of a chance to see a succession really from him due to what goes on at OTAs, but obviously being coached by a brand new defensive line coach in Jacques Cezier. Yeah, so this is part of what happens with OTAs is, yeah, there's some drill work and there's some competition, but like a lot of it is really focusing on – Technique, steps, technique, 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 technique. <laughs> endlessly like it, it, you know, mind-numbingly in some ways because they want to be – really precise they want to lock it down in terms of your angle so when they do speed it up it becomes second nature so it's a lot of slow uh one or two steps before the the play ends or how you take on a block or how you sort of attack a block those type of things and you know it's interesting if you're sort of into that thing but like that is a big uh Point of emphasis for the new defensive line coach, Jack Cesare. He's very specific in what he wants to do. And it's adjustment, an adjustment for everyone. But that is sort of what's happening. So, you know, we'll we'll get some of those fun competition things with like that racing sled. I, I'm sure it has another name in that, but that's always what I think of it because you have two guys try to get off the ball as fast as you can and, and see who can get to the sled first. Um, but for the most part, it's 
teaching. It's trying to get people to understand what the, the expectations are, what this defensive scheme is asking you to do. Because ultimately, once they get that part down, they are going to set them loose. They are going to just let them attack and do these other things. But the baseline stuff is important for them. And it, it's one of the, you know, it's so tough because like you don't have pads. And for linemen in particular, the technique work, unless you're into that sort of thing, it, it it's tough to sort of be like super excited about it um, until they can get pads and really start competing. And, you know, it, 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 you take away this from you can, but, you know, you're looking for positives. You're looking for some things to look good. Yes, the offense is supposed to look good. You don't really get a good glimpse of the defense. But you want to see – look, we just want to see ball at this point. I mean, it's been a long time since that unfortunate Saturday in January um, in Houston, Texans. And here we are basically over, you know, geez, over four months since then and starting to see and get everything as far as what is, you know, start hopefully going to be the glimpses of the 2024 products of the Cleveland Browns. He is Pete Smith from the OBR, obviously crushing it over there. He and the team over there, the OBR, the guys do fantastic work. Make sure you're checking everything out over there. Make sure you're following at underscore Pete Smith underscore. I am your host, Jeff Lloyd. Appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. If you are not part of the everyday crowd, you need to be more like the everyday crowd. They're a bunch of filthy animals, but they're my filthy animals. Join the filthy animals. Subscribe to the Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. Show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcast. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB on ELOB. Let's go, Browns.